All right, welcome to Game Changer. I'm David Villa here with Diana Villa, and we are excited to bring you another episode this week. And we're going to be talking about working from rest. Working from rest. What does that title mean? You were wondering, are we talking about like working out of bed, working from home, not getting up, not going to work? Uh, no, we're not. We're talking about we, really the world's paradigm versus a faith-based or godly-centered attitude and mindset towards work. You know, work was something that God created. And, you know, here's the thing about work. Work is designed to generate fruit. You know, we, uh, the Bible speaks of in one place, it talks about that, you know, if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. And then, you know, God even equates it to looking at the way the ant works. You know, he says to, to work that way diligently. And the scripture, you know, that talks about whatever you do, do it as under the Lord, you know, like you're working for God, not for men. And so whether you own a business, whether you are an entrepreneur or you work for someone, you know, maybe you're in between, um, you know, really understanding God's principles when it comes to work and what we do, I think is important. And, um, you know, when you, when you're in the corporate world, Diana, we, you know, we wear busyness, right? Like a badge of honor, you know, um, we, we kind of take pride somewhat in that the world takes pride in that. And, you know, our work ethic, you know, is, is on our resumes. I mean, we, 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 you know, when you go to interview someone, you see all their resume and the way they list things out, even the opening, the objective to the job, right. I'm looking for a place where I can come in and they begin to list all the attributes that they can bring to the table. They never go, Hey, you know, I want to come in and perform medi- mediocre and, you know, I want to drop the ball and, you know, and really underperform and underwhelm. They go, you know, I'm the self-motivated self-starter. Uh, you know, this is what I can do. And I want to join an organization that's growing and thriving where I can increase my skills and da, 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 da. And so, you know, we even throw out hashtags on social media, right? Hustle and, and grind and, um, I did a few, uh, well, a couple of years back, you know, uh, on grind and I wrote a Bible plan on that called redefine the grind where you talk about that word grind by definition is a horrible word. You know, we use that almost like a badge of honor, like, Hey, I'm going to grind it today. And everybody understands what you mean. Maybe the, you know, the urban dictionary version of that. But the reality is the word grind means to pulverize and smash into pieces. So people wonder why they're exhausted. Right. We wonder why we're um, hit walls and we feel frustrated or overtired. Um, And even as believers, we can get that way. But I think, you know, because that word grind by definition means that we are working ourselves to particles. Right. We're working ourselves to the bone. And so we we wear those. We put them out there hustling and grinding. And, you know, um, and we do that with great pride. And here's the go to response. You know, someone asks you, how are you? Your immediate response is what? I'm busy. You know, how's business? Oh, man, busy. And, you know, um, we take that as maybe the go-to answer, but the reality is a lot of times we're saying that with frustration and stress and anxiety and disappointment and exhaustion behind it. So as, as Christ followers, right, we're, we're called to do it a different way. And this is, you know, by the way, you you know, we, we don't have this all figured out. We're sitting here talking about this because this is something that even right now in seasons that we're in, we, we, we struggle with, we battle with constantly. And so we're bringing this not as, Hey, someone who has all the answers that's done this right for years, but we look back even in these seasons and look back to other seasons and go, where am I getting it wrong? What am I doing? And so, you know, the Lord's challenged us, I think, in this last season we're in and coming out of, you know, as Christ followers to do it a different way, right? Do life a different way, do business a different way. And here's the thing. We're called to prioritize God over work. It doesn't mean don't work. It doesn't mean stay at home, call in sick, right? But it means to put the Sabbath or God's place for rest in the proper priority. And so Sabbath, you know, when you go back to, you know, the old days, right? You know, it, it's, it's a, it's a word that's biblical. A matter of fact, we went to Israel a few years ago and they ha- they celebrate and they, 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 they uh, acknowledge the Sabbath where they close down, you know, and they don't do anything. And uh, even though that could be a form of religion, you know, really striving towards like trying to be a, to do something to, to earn a badge, the principle is a God principle. And, you know, um, to, to the Lord, he placed Sabbath in the commandments. You know, he said, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord God. And in, in that you shall do no work. And so, you know, and that's right along commandments that you shouldn't kill. You shouldn't commit adultery right there in those 10 commandments is to honor the Sabbath. And so, um, you know, 
I want to talk about that. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not advocating, you know, taking certain days off or just working less or immediately taking this and cutting out a day of work or whatever it is, but, you know, honoring the Sabbath and putting God first in your day, putting him first in your week and recognizing that your body, your mind, you know, you need that rest. And rather than hustle and grind, let's do it God's way. And I think it's something that society struggles with. I think if people are honest, there's been lots of times that we've evaluated maybe where we're at and we're like, isn't there more, you know, isn't there more than this? Mm -hmm. Um, I know I've been guilty of saying that. And I think part of that is when we start getting things out of balance. Uh I think when you find things in balance, I I think you're able to um, maybe realize that there is more and you're working in that. I think one thing that's necessary because I think life gets busy, especially if you have work, career, business, kids, um, you know, maybe you're mentoring people, maybe you are in a small group that if you're not careful, those things will overtake you. And I think there's certain, um, maybe a list. I think what's really important is you have to probably remind yourself regularly your list of priorities, God first, your spouse, your children, your job, career, you know, ministry, whatever those are, you have to have those and remind yourself of them. And are you taking the time? Um, Obviously, you won't be certain places in career if you don't dedicate the time. So I think you have to just make sure maybe you're not going to be able to spend, you know, one day a week with your family, but maybe you prioritize three days a week. I'm going to eat dinner with them. Yeah. That's and good. so it's about finding even the small. You know, we're always trying to look for this big span of time. And the fact of the matter is, our schedules and our daily lives a lot of times don't allow these big spans of time. So instead of focusing on the big, start building smalls and the smalls add up to a big, maybe it's like, you know, 20 minutes in the evening, you're sitting down and you're unplugging. I think one of the biggest things that keep people going and not, you know, enjoying the moments that you have um, Sabbath and with your family and your loved ones, your spouse, your children is that we don't unplug. We're constantly connected. And so I think that's one of the things that more than anything, I think we have to build the disciplines for that. Um, obviously your business can't run without you, but you can't let your business run you. You have to run your business. And so you got to prioritize certain things. And again, it's not about a full day. It's about the small nuggets until you're able to do, you know, there's seasons of, of life that, you know, you're able to maybe take those, um, rests more frequently. But if you can't, you still just need to find the small moments. And I think we equate, if I can't do the big then I just don't have, you know, I'm not going to do it at all. And that's not true. Right. Even the small Start is somewhere. multiplied. You know, the Lord multiplies the small. So I think allowing those little bits and allow the Lord to come in, but you're just building the discipline of it. And I think that is where it kind of grows personally. I've never been someone that's liked the word hustle and grind. Even when you kind of talked about it, it kind of rubbed me the wrong, yeah. no pun intended, rubbed me the wrong way. Because I'm like, eh, because I feel like that's not a, that's there's no positive connotation for that. Although I yeah. know the meaning is about, you know, Get after out there it. and go yeah. after it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but just for some reason, that's never been two words that have resonated with me well. But I do think it's about finding those moments. Um, I think our children, when it comes down to daily life, that's one of the things that we gathered at the table and ate dinner often together. Right. And um, we made those moments. But there were seasons where it's like, God, do, do I know what my son looks like today? Yeah. We've all been so busy. So I think it's just about building the disciplines and, and prioritizing and reminding yourself of them and setting um, an appointment. Yeah. Yeah. And in those words, I mean, because of the definitions of those words, words mean something. Words, words have definitions. They have meanings and the words hustle and grind, they have a meaning. And when you say them, you know, you're, you know, you can go along with what society uses those words, or you can look at what they actually mean. And when you speak and operate in those words and you're speaking and operating in what they mean. And so, um, you know, looking at the Sabbath, though, I'm, I'm thinking about building the discipline and I'm even thinking about when it comes to like tithing and things of that nature, there's no way to do it other than do it. You know, there's no easing into it. So, you know, so I think it's one of these things where when you look at building your business and building, you know, a new year, cha- making change, if you're going to, you know, you're going to look at it like, how can I make adjustments, you know, or, you know, I, I, I've been doing this this way, but, you know, I'm really beginning a new start. I think that putting it in place and putting the priority in place, God, or honor that. And, you know, so, you know, a lot of times you, you, we, we, we might be off on a Sunday, not us, but, you know, you're off on a Sunday, but are you, are you unplugged? Are you, are you really off, you know, or are you preparing, 
you know, for Monday, we heard a business owner a couple of weeks ago, we did a mastermind and one of the business owners was talking about, you know, how they used to prepare on Sundays for their uh, Monday. You know, a lot of times that they would use that as preparation day. And, you know, then God convicted him because, you know, that was the Sabbath. And even though he wasn't in the office or he wasn't working, he wasn't taking clients, he would even go to the office by himself and get prepared for the for the week to come on Sunday. So he wasn't allowing himself to unplug and place that Sabbath or God first in that season. And so, you know, if you read the Bible, the Bible talks about really that's where God's blessing comes from. That's where he'll bless that. You know, he blessed it. And so even God himself, when he was creating the heavens and earth, you know, he created them in six days. And then on the seventh day, he rested. He wasn't that God was tired. It was that God was setting a principle in place where everything needs a time of rest. And matter of fact, if you, um, you know, that the year of Sabbath, you know, um, where, um, you know, in the, in the, in the Jewish tradition during that year, there's no planting, there's no pruning and there's no harvesting. So it's, it's interesting because it's, again, it's not about, you know, taking these things and important, importing these rules, you know, carte blanche into, the New Testament era, like taking, you know, every principle, you know, and doing it exactly as it was done then. For instance, that was the society. It was, it was different, the rules and how they operate, but it's the principle. It's things that underpin that principle. And in the, in the Sabbath, there's no planting. So there's your preparation, right? You're planting. There's no pruning. There's no making adjustments. When you begin to make adjustments on things, you know, prepared, uh, preparing for the week or month ahead or year ahead or even harvesting. So it was one of these things where even the ground itself needed resting. It needed breathing. It needed to to breathe. And, you know, um, the Bible talks about that in uh, the law of sowing and reaping. There was that season where the ground needed to breathe. It needed to rest. And, you know, um, when I think of resting, I think of the scripture in Psalms 46 that says, be still and know that I am God. And it doesn't mean do nothing and be lazy. That's not the kind of still it means, right? Like, hey, I'm just going to lay here and just believe God that he's going to make a way, you know, and I'm going to do nothing. It means to rest in, right, the fact that God's in control and his principles and his ways work. And, you know, a lot of times the ways of God you know, if you're not a believer, they don't add up. They don't, his math doesn't add up. You know, his ways don't make sense. They're, they're really counter-cultural, you know, and, you know, they, that's just the only way to describe it. I mean, they just, they don't fly. They fly in the face of, of practicality sometimes, you know, and I'm not, you know, God operates in the practical, but some of his ways and principles are also supernatural. They don't make sense. They don't add up. You know, tithing, how can tithing make sense? When If you don't make enough on 100%, how would you possibly make enough on 90%? The math doesn't add up. But it's a principle where you allow God to come in and bless what remains. I think the same thing with the Sabbath. It's, it doesn't make sense. Well, if I can't do this in six days or in seven days, how can I do it in six days? How can I afford to not take that extra day. I mean, am I sitting around doing nothing? I'm not making ends meet or I'm not accomplishing it. I'm, I, I got to figure this thing out. I've got to find a way. Right. But we don't, we don't, but we're, what we're doing is we're immediately in a sense going, God, I don't need you in the middle of this because if you need him, then you need his principles. You need his way. And his way clearly states that there needs to be rest. There needs to be a season of rest, a time of, of breathing, I don't think it has to be rest uh-huh. when you think rest we're thinking of like sitting. sleep yeah. yeah but it's actually i think it could be doing something that you enjoy yeah absolutely with somebody that you enjoy it with like your you. family <laughs> it, it so i feel like we confuse sabbath as meaning we're going to sit on the yeah. couch like a potato and not have the tv on <sighs> and just like literally sit there and well, that's where the legalism comes in. That's where we went to Israel. They wouldn't even push an elevator button. Yeah. You know, they would. They, I mean, they literally wouldn't push an elevator button. And then Jesus broke that mold, too, because when he came, remember the religious folks were, you know, giving him a hard time because he healed people on the Sabbath. And then he, he looked at him and he said, hey, if your donkey falls in the ditch on the Sabbath, are you going to leave him there or are you going to pick him up? And, of course, the answer would be we'd pick him up, we'd get him out of the ditch, we'd just leave him there to die. And so, you know, he broke that religious mindset of it. So, yeah, you're right. It's not just like sleeping and laying around. and It's it's just unplugging. I think refresh. That's I think good. if I think of Sabbath, I think it's refresh. It's you, good. In, re, in front of word, usually means do it again. So you need to freshen up again. Right. You need to, you know, 
clear your mind again. For me, maybe for you, and I'm, I'm like this too, but when I we get home in the evening, you know, you, you wash your dishes, put them in the dishwasher, whatever, do your little odds and ends. But for me, that, that moment of like kind of like just downloading and refreshing my mind and clearing it would be like, that's when I'm in the shower. Like I, it's like almost like I'm washing away my day. I'm like replaying the things that I need to get through. Okay, and at some points, like after that, I'm re, I feel recharged, refreshed. Yeah. So it's I think for Sabbath, you know, you could replace that with refreshing. Whatever it is that reinvigorates you, meaning right. it's maybe spending time with your replenish, children. Replenish. Yeah. Reinvigorate, refresh, refill, refocus. All the all the uh, rewards, you know. I mean, not all the rewards, but, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, like, um, okay. but, but, re, you know, it's, I, I like that because you were full, but maybe now you're empty. And so before you can pour out more, you need to refill. And that's really about doing the father's business, right? We, we fill ourselves so that we can pour out. So we've spent our day and we're pouring out in different ways to different people for different things, yeah. job, career, people, you know, it may be just even people you pass through in, in a drive through. Hey, how you doing? Whatever. Right. So we have to find those moments to refresh. And I think sometimes right now, if you can't take a whole day to do that, then why not once a month? That's start good. somewhere. The problem is we don't ever start anywhere. And so we just get in this cycle. Um, when Ashton was younger, our youngest daughter, she would go, go, go. She was involved in so many things. She was part of two soccer teams. She was part of a worship team church, mm -hmm. small groups, she was involved in so many different things, and she would go, 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 and I, I can often remember saying, you better slow down, you better take some time to kind of like just right. get yourself together, because she'd run till late at night, right. get up early in the morning for school, be at school. be young again. Yeah. <laughs> she would do all those things, and I would say, hey, if you don't, your body's going to give out, and notoriously, she'd always end up with some sort of sinus or upper res respiratory yeah. infection. It was like, if you don't, your body's going to do it for you. You so like why being not? right, didn't you? I, I love being right. You like, you like being right. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I like. I hate, so actually, we, I like to either be right or prove me wrong. I like right. to be proven wrong, too, but it really? doesn't do that very often. No, I don't. I can't so, figure out how to do um, that. If you don't do it, if you don't take the time, your body... Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do it for you. So I think why not? Or your you know life's going to be a mess. There's a scripture and, and it talks about you know what it, to gain the whole world but lose your own soul. Yeah. What does it what benefit you? What does it benefit you to chase after all these things and lose your family? You yeah. lose your health, lose your finances, not be any better. It does you no good. Yeah, and so, it does the opposite. Correct. And it, and it's not just physically your body, your mind, you know, your spirit. You know, it it, it drains you. Um, you don't think clearly, you don't operate effectively, you're not uh, making wise decisions, you know. Um, and so we don't want to, I guess... Get behind it, a wheel of a car when you're tired. Yeah. What happens? You start so imagine that in life. The back of the seat. Yeah. yeah Got to roll do the that. windows down, turn the air down. <laughs> but that's kind of how we're, we're running through yourself. life and we're exhausted. And, you know, it's kind of like we're beating our heads at the back of our seat just to make it through the day and we're not accomplishing much. Right. We're just going around in circles or we're going recklessly through life. So we're talking about working from rest. We're talking about God's way to work. And we're, we're talking about how society, right, puts badges of honor on hustle and grind, right? I'm going to go hustle today. I'm going to grind. I'm going to make it happen. And we have a, we have a phrase here called make it happen. And, but we, you know, you, you, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go out and grind today, right? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hustle. I'm going to bust it today. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. And so we're talking about that way versus God's way. And it's not work ethic because the Bible clearly speaks again, positively, matter of fact, adamantly about work ethic to the point where he said, if you don't work, you don't eat. I mean, that's pretty, you know, some of us like food and, you know, if you don't work, you don't eat. So you have to work have and sacrifice a few meals. <laughs> well, I mean, Hey, <laughs> but you know, you look great, but if we don't work, we don't eat. So it's, it's, it's imperative that we work, that we do our work as unto the Lord. So the Bible all through the word of God, God expects and, and, and uh, exemplifies excellence. And matter of fact, what he did in six days, if you can think about it, nothing has ever matched what he created in six days. You know, in six days, he created everything that we 
fight over everything that we see and deem important. He, he created, you know, uh, every animal food that we cook and eat. He created the skies in the scenery that people pay thousands of dollars to go and sit and look at. You know, he, he, he created the waters that we fish in and boat in and relax in the beaches that we lay on. He created all of that in six days. And then at the end of that six day period, he created man and he created man in his own image. And so, you know, no matter what robots and artificial intelligence and no matter what science is out there, technology, Technology, nothing has ever come close to creating what God has created. And he did it in six days. So he not only expects excellence, he exemplified excellence. He modeled excellence in the six days. He did everything that needed to be done. And then he said, it's time to rest. It's time to let it breathe. And, you know, so we, again, while we don't want to import right? The rules in the Old Testament. I'm talking about the, the, the way it's done, the religious aspect, because Jesus came, right, to, to and, and, he, and he came and sh- showed the gaps in the law. He came and showed the gaps in the religious society. He, he fought against religion. So we don't want to re- import these rules, just carte blanche, right, into our New Testament era. We are of the new covenant. However, we want to treasure, and this is the principle here, treasure in our hearts the values that underpin them. So the very things that hold them up, the very reasons they exist, the very purpose and and definition and, and, and design that God placed with, hey, go and do replenish, multiply, right? You know, create and and build and then rest. Again, resting is not just sleeping, but it's, it's refreshing. It's replenishing. It's reinvigorating. It's refocusing. It's rebooting. It's doing these things on a continual basis. And God expects us to do that. And by doing so, when you, when you do that physically, mentally, emotionally, right? Financially, but you also do it spiritually and you do it with God at the helm. And so the world has to rely Think about this on efforts, on their wit, you know, on on luck for productivity. How 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 bad is that? I think, think about if that. If you're gonna really take hold of Sabbath, it has to be, and that's the word I just wrote down. It's intentional. Right. You're gonna have to be intentional about it. That's and good. Whatever that intentionality is, whether you make that intentional and committed, uh-huh. you got to make a commitment uh-huh. for it to rest mentally, spiritually, like find ways to do that. I didn't always do that. In my, in, our, in my career, right? I didn't always no. do that in our marriage. But there, there came a time when I... condemnation. <laughs> well, no, but there came a time when I, when I learned that principle. Um, I feel like it takes some time, times, but if you could save people from, you know, jumping off a cliff, would you do it? Yeah. yeah. I think part of this walk really is about, um, you know, not because we've done it so well, but because we've probably done it so wrong, how can we not share that there's a better way? And mm. there's a better way in Christ. And it's not cookie cutter for everyone. So, so again, I, I want to emphasize, I, we've talked to people just recently, um, again, having being around business people and talking to them. We both lead small groups with business professionals. We have masterminds and events. We work in a business. And so we talked to people, and there was somebody recently that shared an idea that they did um, that God laid on their heart, and it worked for them. It worked for recruiting new people, and it also worked for their office where they did a four-day work week, you know, and... Um, they had different hours for the four days. I'm not day. opposed to that. <laughs> you already work four days. <laughs> you do. Oh, no. But, but four-day work week, where they, they actually put out there, they had different hours for the four days, and then they had the fifth day off. And then we've, uh, t- somebody recently, somebody that I'm connected with, um, you know um, him as well, uh, from the auto auto business, runs a company, um, a private company that serves the automotive industry. And God laid it on his heart a few months ago in a church service for every seventh month, he closes his shop down for one week. It was just something that he, you know, he, he was saying it's not for everyone. It was just something that the Lord laid on his heart to do. And when God speaks to you about the principles, see, these are principles of the Sabbath. It's not, it's not just an idea. It's not like, well, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that, right? It's, 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 there's got to be a reason behind it. And God may speak to you, and it may be just putting him first on a Sunday. Maybe you've not done that. Maybe it's you know just not working as much, not grinding it and hustling it. But this person, their idea, and they've done it now, I think two different months, um, two different weeks, they've had it gone for t- two different times where seven weeks, the seventh week, they closed down. So they don't prospect. And they don't, um, they don't harvest. They don't do anything. They, they take off themselves and for a whole week, and then they come back to work. And so every seventh week. And now that's a big deal. And how I many know you have to hear from God on that? But again, it's not the idea. It's the principle behind it. And we're, the world has to rely on efforts and wit and, and luck for productivity and success. I'll say it this way. We have a more excellent way. And that's where—so so if the Lord speaks to you 
about placing this principle into effect, however that is. I guess the, the, I guess the byproduct of that is you can't outgive God. You can't, out, you can't outbless God. You can't work hard enough, get lucky enough, be witty enough, or put enough effort in to do what only God can do when you trust him and put him where he belongs. That's good, right? I think he takes our little bit and he makes it much, but we got to give good. him a little bit first. That's good. Um, it's not going to happen. You have to create those moments. You right. have to create that time. You have to create those disciplines. You have to create whatever that is. Um, but start small. If it's only one evening a night, you're committed to, I'm going to unplug from everything and I'm going to, you know, go through this Bible study with my family or one week, you know, one evening a month, I'm sorry, one evening a week that you're going to make sure that everyone's at the dinner table. Um, you know, whatever that is, um, one, one evening a week, I'm going to, you know, read a book that's going to help. It's still going to be a, a, you know, letting down, but like educate myself on what, whatever it is I'm needing in that season, whether it's career or family, I'm going to better myself, whatever area you're needing better, whatever it is. I think you have to make a decision. You have to be intentional about it and you have to be committed about it. And then you got to walk it out. And I think you take the little bit. And I think the more you see, as you give the little bit, God multiplies that and he makes it much, you see the benefits and you'll want to add maybe two evenings, or maybe you'll end up taking, you know, a whole, you know, Saturday afternoon, you know, yeah. because that, it's changing. You see the little bit, and God takes that and makes he multiplies it. it. makes it a lot. Levitica, a huge impact with a little bit. The Leviticus, the scripture that we're basing this on, too, is in Leviticus. I want to read it in the New Living Translation. It's Leviticus 25, and it's verse 2 to 5, and it says, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you have entered the land I'm giving you, the land itself must be observed, a Sabbath rest before the Lord every seventh year for uh for six years, you may plant your fields. Now, this is something that God was saying once. First of all, it's, it's the land he gave them, right? It's the promised land. But then he said something. This is this is just a principle. Again, remember the guy I told you about his business every seventh week. Well, God rested on the seventh day. Remember, the Bible says a day is like a thousand years to the Lord. So it's a principle. Again, it's not a religious, don't make a, a tenet out of it. But here in this in the word in Leviticus, it was the seventh year. So he said for six years, you can plant your fields, prune your vineyards, harvest your crops. But during the seventh year, an entire year, okay, the the seventh year, the land must, listen to this, the land must have a Sabbath year of complete rest. So it wasn't the people only, it was the land. The land must have a Sabbath year of complete rest. And really, I think what God was doing is like, you know, trust me for more than enough. Trust me to meet the needs. And it said, uh, it's the Lord's Sabbath. Do not plant your fields or prune your vineyards during that year, and don't store away the crops that grow on their own, or gather the grapes from your unpruned vines. The land must have a year of complete rest. So he was saying, don't even store it up. Don't even like try to get creative and go, you know what, I'm not going to go out and plant new, but I'm going to store away this. You know, he was saying, trust me daily, trust me throughout this process. And um, I think that's in, in, in a principle that we can live by because what what we have to realize Diana is that God is our source and supply that he is our source and he's our supply and when you remove the substance from the source when you remove the substance you and I from the source right then we're in trouble right we miss out on every attribute that God has we miss out on his blessing we miss out on his provision we miss out on his favor his wisdom his anointing we've I think been talking we see about things differently when we have um taking the time to to have that rest in him. I think we look at our perspective is different because it's through the angle, I'm sorry, the um, eye of Christ, right? Mm, it's good. from his perspective. It's not from ours because we've come in and we've allowed him to come in and, and refresh us and, and realign us. That's a good, another reword. Yeah, there you go. Realign us <clears> back <throat> to, because as we go through our week, maybe we, we kind of get off course a little bit, but that Sabbath allows us to get back to, refocusing and realigning That's with good. his plan and his purpose. Because if left to our own, we're going to go for a selfish, selfish motive and it's going to be about us. But I think if we allow that, God will, you know, re adjust those things in our life and we'll see things differently. We won't focus on what we don't have. We'll focus on the blessings that we do, the things that God has done for us. So I think that Sabbath allows us to kind of empty out the clutter of this world, which says, I don't have enough. I still need this. I still need to get to this level. And we allow the Sabbath to, to 
to bring us back and, and it puts the perspective of the Lord. It's like he's more than enough and he's provided. And, you know, yes, I still want to be here, but he, mm -hmm. you know, we, we take note of what we do have in him versus what we don't have in this world. Yeah, so we're talking today, as we get ready to wrap up here in a minute, we're talking about working from a position of rest, from a posture of rest, right? And we're putting God and the Sabbath and rest where it needs to be in, in, a, in, in the proper priority. And, you know, um, you know, can I just say that making a conscious decision not to strive for success, but instead to trust that as we put God first, that he will take care of us is nothing less than spiritual warfare. I mean, you know, so if you're going, hey, man, I, I just am getting convicted by this, or man, that's just not me. I'm so far off base. Don't get beat up by it. Don't get condemned by it. Understand that that's a spiritual battle because you are, and I am, you know, we're, we're, we're bombarded by the world's definitions and the world's way of doing things. So here's my question. Whose report will you believe? Whose plan will you take? Whose blueprint will you follow? And I believe as kingdom um, business people, you know, we'll look at it and we'll say God's principles, you know, are, are above the principles of this world. God's, God's way is above the, that way. And, you know, he has a, he has a way and that way is, is above. It's better than, it's a more excellent way. And, um, you know, he's gifted us and he's given us talents. And, but, you know, if we want to live a life that doesn't operate in stress, doesn't walk in anxiety, doesn't mean you won't struggle with those things, but, when, you know, if you don't want to walk in them, you don't want to dwell in them and live in them, then I think that, you know, taking a step back and saying, okay, where are my priorities out of line? And I think that that's going to, you know, go take us a long way because, you start know. Start somewhere. 100%. I think the key is start somewhere. I think if you're thinking from a business standpoint, maybe you're not going to walk into your business or your workplace and start a Bible study every week, but maybe your start somewhere is when you're sitting at your desk or your cubicle or your workstation, you just simply within your own self, close your eyes and just say, Lord, this is the day you've made. Yeah. I will be glad and rejoice in it, rejoice in it. And I invite you in. So the Sabbath can be literally just about inviting him in to guide you, uh, uh, you know, uh, through your day, but it's taking the moment to start somewhere. You don't have to start an hour Bible study, but maybe it's just simply inviting him in at your day once you sit down to start your day in your at, at your job or your business. Hey Amen. I hope you got something out of this. Don, I want you to do this. We have a prayer here that we typed up, and I want you to just maybe pray that prayer over the people watching and listening right now. Remember this, and then we'll wrap up. But I, I want to just say, you know, you can work from a place of rest, and you can accomplish more God's way. The, the, the God of the universe— I mean, I'm talking, we're talking the God of the universe. We're not talking Elon Musk. We're not talking Donald Trump. We're not talking Joe Biden. We're not talking about the, the, the you know, the, the most popular or Kardashian. We're not talking about anybody else, right, that has any kind of status in this world. No, no other king or queen or prominent person. We're talking about the God of the universe that created the heavens and the earth in six days. He set a principle for himself this is the God that doesn't get tired, that doesn't sleep, that doesn't slumber, that's up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that hears you no matter what time it is when you call out to him, no matter where you are in the world. While you're sleeping at one side of the world, somebody on the other side of the world is in the middle of their day, and God is everywhere at all times. He's omnipresent, he's omniscient, and he's a God that is always, always on. He rested on the seventh day, not because he was tired, but because he was setting a principle for his people to follow. So that's what we're talking about today. And I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to let the Lord place a burden on you to find your place of rest and work from that. So will you lead us in that prayer before we close out? Father, I choose to start with you. I choose to start my week, my yes. day, seeking you first. I choose to make time for my family and to take care of your temple, my body, instead of neglecting myself and my relationships to run after wealth, security, and status. Father, let my heart find rest in you. I bring all my anxiety, the pressure to provide and to perform to you, and I ask you to still my anxious heart with your perfect peace. Mm -hmm. I ask for your supernatural productivity and all-powerful grace to overtake my work and indeed my life. Let my life be a testimony of your grace, not my greatness. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. We enjoyed bringing it to you. We love your comments. Keep them coming. And if you uh, want to hang out with us live, we do this recording live on Tuesday mornings at 8.30 a.m. You can hang out with us, um, a small group of live individuals that we've become close to. And you can do that only by downloading the Game Changer app. You can go to Android or Apple and download Game Changer by IPD Agency. And also you'll find all kinds of resources on there. We have Bible plans. Uh, we have small groups. We have uh, different things that we do here in the market place. It's called Game Changer by IPD Agency, and uh, it's a blessing. We have over 6,000 people in the last few months alone since the app's been live. Download the app, and uh, we're really blessed about that. If you're on social media, make sure you tag us. We'd love to see how God's moving in your life. If you want to subscribe, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, Spotify, or Apple Podcast. You can search Game Changer Podcast, and it'll come up. And uh, the episodes that we do on Tuesday mornings drop on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Eastern. We love you guys. We appreciate you. And listen, don't forget, work from a place of rest starting today. In Jesus' name, amen? Boom.